Hi, friend. I'm so glad you're here today and you get to hear an interview with the amazing Heather McClellan. She is a yoga studio owner from Fayetteville, New York, and her and her husband own the Mindful Yoga Studio, and it is a beautiful space. You need to check out their website immediately. It is so pretty. But before I get started on that, I just want to tell you a little bit about her mission and how we met. So she and her husband started this yoga studio after daydreaming about thinking of a space where students could find community, but even more find themselves on the yoga mat, which I think is so beautiful. And so we met, Heather and I met through a mutual friend and we really hit it off. As soon as we got on the, on a video call together, we just really hit it off. And the reason why is because this woman is so creative and her drive is incredible. I just fell in love with the idea about how she created a brand and how she markets her studio and how creative she is. So Heather, thank you so much for being here today. Yes. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about your studio and what you offer to your students. Yeah. So, um, uh, yeah, I own mindful yoga and, um, the, I mean, you hit the nail on the head with my little intro, but, um, we're located in Fayetteville, New York, um, which is just outside of Syracuse, New York, a small town. Um, we opened just over a year ago, um, and we offer all different types of classes at our studio, um, ranging from restorative, beginner classes, all the way up to a little bit more advanced. Um, we definitely specialize, though, in working with people who are just learning to get on the mat. That's great. I love that you said, like, someone who's just beginning you know, coming into the yoga space. And that's such a sweet time because as you, you know, we can all think as yoga teachers back to when we first went into a yoga studio or experienced yoga and that feeling and how uncomfortable it is when you don't really know what to expect and oh, yeah. how it, how so important it is for the yoga teacher to remember that feeling when it is a new person coming in. Yeah, definitely. And one of my favorite things personally is working with beginners because I hear all the time people tell me, I can't come to yoga because I can't touch my toes. I can't do yoga because I, I'm not flexible. I can't move. And I'm like, listen, it's okay. Yoga is for you. Yoga is for everyone. It's an amazing amazing job. <laughs> oh, that's so sweet. I love that. And apparently my dog Zoe feels like it's an amazing job too, because she <laughs> is joining the interview with us today. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the life of a home office, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I enjoy hearing you say that yoga is for everyone, but yet you also said we focus on beginners and mm. someone going through an injury or trying to heal. And that's something that I talk about, oh my gosh, every single day, as often as I possibly can, about the idea of knowing who your ideal student is and catering to what they need. Because yoga is for everyone. So there's just a plethora of availability of who we could serve as yoga teachers. And so for you owning a studio and saying, we cater to beginners and people looking to heal from an injury that is it just allows you i'm putting words into your mouth a little bit here but it allows you to focus in and i would assume because mm -hmm. this is what i teach and i've heard so many times it allows for your marketing to come way easier am i right yes definitely yeah it definitely in the beginning of opening the studio you have an idea of who your um, client is going to be but you know, that can definitely shift and go in a different direction, um, which is exactly what we saw. Um, and so it was much easier for me instead of marketing to everyone and everything, um, every type of yoga, there's, we are now more marketing just towards, you know, beginners definitely makes it a lot easier. <laughs> I think that is great. And it is yeah. exactly what I, what I talk about all the time. So I'm, I love when I hear someone that's experiencing that and they can say, yes, it really is working. Like exactly mm -hmm. like you say, mm -hmm. and I wish I lived closer. I would love to come to one of your restorative classes. <laughs> I know. Anytime you're in town. <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> we have a really awesome class that I teach on Tuesday nights and I call it Tender Tuesdays. Oh, how and sweet. Yeah, we um, use a lot of essential oils. And at the end of class, I give everybody like a warm towel to put over their face. Oh. It's like the best. I Every time I teach it, I'm like, I wish I was taking this class. <laughs> <laughs> that is so perfect. I heard yeah. a yoga teacher say this just the other day. And I was like, man, I wish I had come up with this, but I'm just going to give her credit and still use it all the time. Mm -hmm. And she said to, if you want to have your passion come through for yoga and to really inspire your students and just provide a great class, teach mm -hmm. the class you want to take. Yes, for sure. And for that an is your entire class or workshop, like something that you want. And, um, that you would want to take yourself. It's definitely, that is very true. <laughs> I love it. So good. So good. Well, I think we could talk about your studio and how amazing you have done with your studio all day long. But what I want to bring attention to mm -hmm. is that the first time I ever looked at your website, there was one thing that caught my attention so fast that I was like, oh my gosh, I have got to learn more about this opportunity. Yeah. And it's the idea that I will let you introduce the whole idea, but um, just to set it up, mm -hmm. I talk about thinking outside the studio a lot to yoga teachers. And I say, in order to take teaching yoga to from hobby to career, you really have to think outside the studio because teaching in a studio is fantastic. And I highly, highly, highly encourage everyone to do it. But if you want to earn the full-time living and only teaching yoga, not working three different jobs and not teaching 25 plus a week at studios, you really have to start to get creative and think outside of teaching yoga in a studio. And so I talk about this from the teacher side often mm -hmm. on the yoga studio side, oftentimes it goes very quickly to merchandise, which is an easy way to have an additional revenue stream from a studio in which I love. I think all studios should have t-shirts because we all yes. love shirts Yes, <laughs> and I think it's so important. But you have done something really, really, really unique. And when you and I connected over it, you had a, a really cool story of how it wasn't even something that you just came out of the gate with. It was something that kind of organically happened. So please introduce that idea and concept and share what it's all about. Yes. Uh, so this idea, um, well, this programmer um, offering that I give to people in the community is called mindful space. Essentially what it is, is I uh, go into your home and uh, create a space for you to either practice yoga or um, for you to practice meditation, um, or it can be something entirely different. Maybe you need a spot in your home that um, to invoke creativity or um, uh, for you to sit down and get uh, creative projects done or uh, whatever it is that you're wanting, um, I come into your home and I can give you some ideas on how to create that. I feel like I'm good at pulling things from other places in your home and then like organizing them in a way that creates like uh, something that feels really special and inspiring. I hear people all the time saying, I would love to practice yoga at home and it just doesn't feel like the studio, which, mm -hmm. you know, you're not going to maybe create an entire studio feel in your home, but maybe if you have that one little corner or that one little nook in your house, uh, um, you can create that same sense of feeling calm and centered and uh, maybe a little bit detached from your to-do list, uh, then you'll be able to practice a little bit more um, on your mat. I love that idea. And I, when I first read it on your website, I immediately thought, oh my gosh, I want her to do this in my house. Mm -hmm. I want to know what that's like. I would love for you to share how it came about. One of my other hobbies, decorating homes. I love going in and doing interior design and organizing things and um, changing things around in people's homes. It's mostly just like with friends. And so that's kind of where it started. Um, I was doing this in a friend's home and telling another friend about it. This friend was like, oh, can you come into my house and can you help me like rearrange? My house is really small, so I don't really know how to like arrange it like in a nice way. It always feels very like kind of chaotic and disorganized. And 
I really want a space where I can um, feel inspired and interview people for my podcast. Um, So, yeah. So I was like, of course, they can totally come in and do this for you. So I went in her home, rearranged a couple things, gave her some ideas. She was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe like you did this in like an hour and a half. Like, this is unbelievable. Thank you so much. Um, and then a few days later I saw her and she said to me, she's like, you know, Heather, you really have to do something with this. You really, you should offer something like this at the studio. So I sat on it for a little bit and thought about it and was like, no, that would be really cool to offer people the opportunity when they can't come to a class to be able to go into their home and, um, you know, set up a little like meditation area or practice area for them inside their home. She uh, thought of this idea and um, inspired mindful space. So that that's is how so it came beautiful. together. I love yeah. it. And, yeah. you know, I, I talk about this a lot as well, is that as soon as you know who your ideal student is, they actually tell you what they want. Mm. And so while this was a friend, maybe she is a beginner to yoga or healing in some way, but she is a creative type and needed a space in her home. Mm -hmm. So she, for the mindful space, like she is your ideal student in that way. Mm -hmm. And she told you what she wanted. Like she, she told you and you just provided that to her, which is so amazing you and I have talked about you, you're wanting to grow that part of your business yes. because it's something that you enjoy doing. So you find passion in doing it and people need it. Mm-hmm. So I have some ideas for you. So this is kind of going to be a combo. Like we're interviewing because you have a great idea, but because I know you want to grow it, it's also going to be a consultation call, which is really fun for me. So I have some ideas for you, but first I would love to hear anything that you've already done on the marketing Mm -hmm. side for mindful space? So I have done, um, very minimal social media, maybe a couple posts over the past, uh, year, a lot of, um, just like talking to people. If somebody is mentioning to me that they want to practice at home, but they're having trouble, then that's usually when I would bring up mindful space. And then of course on our website, we have it. Okay. So you mentioned one thing that is at the top of my list and it's always the first thing that I mention because it's the easiest thing to forget, which mm-hmm. is just telling students about it. Right. So letting right. them know. So it sounds like when someone mentions something to you, it's then mentioned, which is perfect because that's a great opportunity. Right. But I would encourage you to actually mention it at other times as well because not everyone's going to ask, but I can be in your class and think, oh, I wish I had a space at home and not mention it to you because what are you going to do for, like, they don't know that you could do Mm -hmm. something about it. So you have other teachers that teach at your studio, correct? Yes. Yes. Okay. So I would also talk to them about it Mm -hmm. and see number one, if that's something that they would want, and maybe it's something that you offer them for free just to get them to experience the, the, the offering, and then they, they would offer it to other people, but also having them mention it in class. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great idea. Seems so simple, but I haven't, I know I haven't like really talked to any of our other teachers about it. So, so there you go. It's the easiest thing, but it's so easy to forget. And then you mentioned your website, you mentioned that it's on there. There is a tab and that one is beautiful. Like that, it explains it so well. And I, it's immediately what caught my attention. So it did mm-hmm. great on Thank that, <laughs> but I would highlight it a little bit more. So mm-hmm. on your homepage, you have a call out at the very top right now, um, at the time of this recording for prenatal yoga, and it's mm-hmm. across the top. And I would say switching that out with the mindful space every now and then. It doesn't have to be forever. It doesn't have to be all the time, Mm -hmm. but there is something that's called banner blindness in the marketing world. And it's Mm -hmm. basically when something is always there, Mm -hmm. people then don't see it anymore. Mm -hmm. So if prenatal yoga is always there, people will then stop seeing it. They'll just kind of graze over it if they visit your website often. 
So switching that out is really helpful just to like refresh Mm -hmm. and start to have people notice it. And then on the pricing and schedule page, like all of your offerings laid Mm -hmm. out in different kind of boxes, I would just add a box that had mindful space on there. Yeah. Which I, that's, you know, I'm like, how did I not think of that? (laughs) It seems like such a simple thing, but I think that's a great idea. I love that one. Well, give yourself some grace because likely you're a yoga teacher, you're a yoga studio owner. You're probably not, you were not a marketing director or VP in a previous life. Like that is probably (laughs) not where you, where your headspace is. So you're doing a wonderful job. You have a beautiful website that is very clear and compelling. And the other thing I thought about on your website is your blog. I would just say that every so often, whatever your frequency is, based on the frequency, make sure to mention mindful space. It could have its own dedicated blog post, which I would highly recommend. Mm -hmm. One, And then in other blog posts where you talk about a home practice or a Mm -hmm. home meditation, whatever you say, link back to that first blog post that's all about the mindful space. Awesome. I love that idea. It's a great one. Yay. Well, I can't wait to see it. I'm like inspired and want to go home and write a blog now. (laughs) (laughs) I love it so much. The other two pieces, you mentioned one and you didn't mention the other. So we'll start with the one you did mention, which was social media. With social media, number one, we have to always remember that not everyone is seeing our content. So while it feels like we are saying the same thing over and over and over again, and we're driving our audience nuts, they're seeing it 6% of the time. Like really a rough estimate. And so I would say no less than twice a month, I would definitely be pushing and just mentioning the mindful space option. If that feels like not enough, like if you still aren't getting much traction with it, I would increase that because it's just not being seen enough. Yeah. And then seeing what I would really test out a few different ways of writing what it's about. So writing it in different ways so that you can see, oh, that Instagram post or Facebook post, whatever it was, is getting more engagement than this one. So that messaging worked better than this one. Right. For social media, visual is the key. So I would Mm -hmm. say take a picture of a space that Mm -hmm. you've worked on, even if it's in your house, or like I said, if it's one of the um, yoga teachers Mm -hmm. that you go to their house and kind of walk them through the process of what you do, even if it's Mm -hmm. just once, take some pictures and use their words that, you know, your friend that said, oh my gosh, you did this in an hour and I have been sitting here for a month trying to figure out what to do. Yes. Yes. I'll just gather a bunch of friends together and (laughs) do some at their homes to get some content. I I think that will be, I think that's part of it too, is maybe what's holding me back from social media is not having maybe the right content to share Mm -hmm. exactly what it is and um, how it's done. So um, yeah, maybe utilizing some friends to get some content to share uh, yeah. would be definitely beneficial. First and foremost, testimonials always mm-hmm. are amazing. So anytime you have someone actually pay for the service, or here's the super bonus that a lot of people forget. If you are just getting started now, this is not you just getting started, but kind of a general statement of mm. if you are just getting started with something, I always suggest giving whatever that is, if it's a service Mm -hmm. or a product, whatever, to a handful of people in exchange for a testimonial. Right. And then when you put, you can still post that testimonial because the person on the other side, like if you gift the, the mindful space option to your friends, Mm -hmm. they're still receiving the exact same thing that someone would pay for. Mm -hmm. So utilizing their testimonial is not wrong. It's Mm -hmm. perfect because they still got the value and the other person reading it doesn't have to know if they paid for it or not. Right. So the other thing that I thought about that you haven't mentioned, making sure to mention it in your emails. Yes. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Definitely more 
on the email end of things. I like to send those out more often um, and have them be not just bringing light to what classes or workshops we offer, but to use them in a way to teach uh, a bigger audience about yoga and so, like similar to a blog, I guess, um, mm -hmm. but just through an email format. So, um, so I am doing that pretty often uh, oh, great. already, but um, I've never like even thought to do <laughs> mindful space, which is funny. <laughs> it is okay. I never thought to share that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's what I'm here for. That is yeah. exactly what I'm here for. And on that note, it's so wonderful that you're already writing emails and sending those pretty frequently. Mm -hmm. The exciting thing is that can, like it can go both ways. Your blog can become your email or your email can become your blog. Mm. Whatever you share that's not schedule and workshop related in mm -hmm. your email. So whatever that is. So if you're talking, maybe you talk for two or three sentences on meditation versus mm -hmm. asana. Mm -hmm. And maybe you talk about that. The blog could be an extended version of that mm -hmm. and, yeah. send, and have it post at the same time as your email. So your content is consistent. Yeah. Yeah. And then post two or three social media posts about that same thing. Right. I love that idea. So then you allow this one idea to work for you in so many different areas and it's a sanity saver. Mm -hmm. Yes. For sure. <laughs> Okay, so I have one other idea for you. My idea for you stems from when I looked at your website and thought, I want her to do this for my home, uh -huh. but I don't live in your area. Right. So my question to you is, have you ever thought about doing this virtually? No, <laughs> <laughs> but I think it's a great idea. I, Yay. yeah, I've never thought to do it, but, um, yeah, I think it's a really great idea. And I would think, and you can tell me what you think about this idea, that mm -hmm. I could send you pictures or a video. I think video mm -hmm. would be awesome. Just like an yeah. iPhone video or whatever the, you know, like a cell phone video. Nothing fancy, but just say like, what if I sent you some pictures in a video of my closet? Yeah. And said, okay, here's where I typically meditate. Is there anything that you thought I could do differently in this space? to make it more of a creative space. Mm. And then you could then send me, maybe you send a video back to me explaining what you think about the space and what I could do. Right. Right. I, I think that's a great idea or even getting on like a zoom call like this and oh, yeah. doing, um, yeah, doing it that way after I've like seen pictures and thought about it and, uh, have come up with some ideas. So I think oh, that's I a great that. idea. So here's my, here's my homework for you. I okay. would say for you to think about what that would entail, what mm -hmm. the process would be like, um, outlining that in some bulleted form, like your website is so, so clean, you, whatever you would put on your website, you know, having that, what the price would be mm -hmm. and what it would include. Yes. I I'm down. I'm Yay! ready to go. <laughs> I love this. So I love this cool. idea. Yeah. Because I mean, I love the idea of reaching out to, um, I mean, of course there's so many people in my mm -hmm. own community right here, um, in Fayetteville that could use this, but I also really love the idea of just reaching out to, um, more people who maybe don't have this in their area and could benefit from it. Yes. So, yeah, I love it. I think it's great. And it would be something that you could promote definitely outside your network, you know, right. but it's even something, and it would have to see like what the price is for the in-home one versus the virtual one. It right. might be something if there's a price difference, that's just better for someone due to the price, mm -hmm. even in your local area. So right. just having an idea about that and having a few different a few different options, you know, for yeah. that offering is, is always good. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's a great idea. I really, really like that one. Awesome. Okay. So you have tons of homework, but hopefully really fun homework. Yeah. <laughs> I'm feeling very inspired. I'm excited Yay. about this. 
I'm really excited for you too. And I'm here as a resource as always. So you can think about promoting it on social media, email, blogging, and just mm-hmm. talking to people and your new exciting offer of a virtual mindful yes. space, which is really fun. So you have done like we talked about all of these marketing ideas for this new offering, but I want to just make sure that you know that I think you're doing an amazing job with marketing your studio. And when you and I connected, you had some really incredible ideas for marketing yourself as a new yoga teacher. So I would love for you to share that with my audience before we hop off of this interview. Yes. Uh, So I was a new teacher once as well. Um, So over the years and just Um, having the experience myself and then as well as having new teachers coming into mindful yoga. uh, Some of the ways that I I really encourage people to market themselves is the first one. If your studio that you're working at has schedule cards, grab a whole all of the classes that you are teaching yourself and then hand those out to people. Anytime somebody Um, is expressing that they're interested in yoga or even if they're not um, let them know that you teach yoga and you'd love to have them come and then give them your schedule card Um, people hang on to those people still have the ones that we had when we first opened so it's a really really um, it's a great tool to use for marketing um, especially if you're brand new and trying to build up your following That's awesome. And I'm just going to jump in really quickly because on my end, there was a little bit of a video glitch at the most important time, of course. So I'm just going to recap what you said and to take the schedule cards and where there is the times of the classes, highlighting the classes that you will be teaching. So when you hand them out, it's the one that's highlighted that you're teaching. Yes. 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 Awesome. Um, And the other, uh, marketing tool that I personally used actually when I was opening the studio, but um, I was and currently still am working at a cafe that's literally a quarter mile up the road. It's really close, a couple minutes. Be creative. Um, any resources that you have right in front of you, your current job, uh, use that as a tool to tell people about that you're teaching yoga and when your classes are and keep encouraging them to come. Uh, You obviously don't want to like hound them, but uh, (laughs) it's, you definitely, it's going to take a while uh, for them to show up. They'll keep telling you, I got to go to one of your classes. I have to go to one of your classes. And it might take like a year to get them um, into your, into your class, but they'll get there eventually. So just keep encouraging them. Tell them, tell them it's not scary because most people are just scared. (laughs) That is incredible advice. And I love that you took where you were, you were already in the cafe and you just thought, okay, people coming to a cafe, they're living in the local area. Most likely, maybe there's some people traveling, but most likely they live here, especially if they're coming consistently, I should talk to them, get to know them and just invite them. It's simply inviting people to the class. But my favorite part of what you just said was consistently being, just being persistent, Mm -hmm. not hounding, but persistently and just encouraging them to come to your class because it does take a while, especially for a beginner. It does take a while. Right, exactly. Yes. That's great. Thank you so much for sharing your advice and thank you for being here today. Yes, thank you. Thank you for having me. It's been wonderful. So you take your homework of marketing and everyone else. So you get to take the ideas that Heather has had and shared with you and put those in your life and sharing the, like thinking through getting creative and just being mindful of where you are. So if you have a full-time job somewhere, how can you utilize that full-time job to get people into your yoga class? And get creative with that. If you're working in corporate America and teaching nights and weekends, but want to make that switch, think about this in such a positive way. The people that are working in corporate America may have more extra money to play with. So they might be able to come to more of your classes or have you be a private instructor for them. 
So just get creative with whatever you have at your fingertips right now and grow your business as a yoga teacher. Have fun doing it. And until next time, see you later. And the moment that I read it on your website, oh my goodness, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> the wind just opened the door, so I'm going to go check that real quick. Okay. From this source, so. I am so sorry. There is a giant plane flying overhead right now. This interview is like doomed to have so many edits. We're just going to wait for that to go away. <laughs> okay. I think the plane's coming back. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> So we're just going to wait a second because I can hear it, but it's far off. Okay. Perfect. Awesome. No more planes. <laughs> Gosh, that was so insane. Oh the dogs, goodness. the door, the wind, the, like how many other things? I know. I know.